Hi everyone, it's Michael again. So I have I've never done a video so far on a well-known theorem in geometry. I've done it on specific problems from competitions, but here is a, a very beautiful theorem called the butterfly theorem. So if you've seen it before, um, maybe this will give you another proof of it that you've never seen. And if you haven't, uh, I hope you enjoy it because it's a very uh, I'll say delightful problem um, and quite surprising too. Um, so this likely wouldn't be on a competition because if anyone had seen the theorem before, then they would basically get three points. Um, so if you haven't seen it, um, pause the video, uh, see if you can find a solution and good luck. All right, so I'm going to go over the problem. So you have a circle with center O, and you have a chord AB of it. And M is the midpoint of that chord. Then we take two other chords of the circle also passing through M. So let them be EF and GH. Um, and then EG cuts the chord at point X. And HF cuts the chord at point Y, then the problem asks you to show that XM is equal to YM. Now this at first is quite surprising um, because EF and HG can be any chords passing through M. So there's kind of a lot of flexibility in the initial arrangement um, and yet, no matter how you do it, no matter what two chords you pick to pass through point M, you'll always find that XM is equal to YM. So it's a very interesting result. Um, so there's a whole bunch of solutions to this. I think if you go on cutthenot.org, there's probably around like 15 of them or 20 of them. Um, so there's no one way to get started on this problem. People have found a whole bunch, but I'm going to tell you, um, so I actually saw a bunch of solutions to this before I even tried it. So I can never really know what uh, I would have done, but here's what I like to think. Here's how I like to think I would have proved it. Um, if I had seen it for the first time. So. We want to show that XM is equal to YM, but we also know that angle XGM is equal to angle MFY. That's because XGM is equal to angle EGH, which is equal to angle EFH, which is equal to angle MFY. So we know that these two angles are equal, and we want to show that these two segments are equal. Well, if two equal angles subtend equal segments, then they have to have the same size circumcircle. Um, so basically, we want to show that XGM and MFY have the same size circumcircle, um, but they wouldn't necessarily be the same circumcircle. And I kind of mentioned this in the, the last problem that I put on YouTube. So Here's a strategy. How can we sort of combine the two figures so that the circumcircles would be the same, not just the same size, so that they would overlap? And so in order to do this, I'll construct a point F prime. So I'm going to draw OM and I'll construct. Um, so before I construct point F prime, uh, first note that since M is the midpoint of chord AB, we have to have OM is perpendicular to AB. Um, that's just tr um, obviously true of any circle. So, but let F prime be the reflection of F over uh, the line OM. So it, it has to lie on the circle also by symmetry. Um, but basically, if it were true that XM were YM, um, then this triangle X F prime M would be the same as the triangle Y F M. And so um, angle X F M would be the same as angle 
YFM, which as we said before is the same as MGX, and that would mean that this um, quadrilateral has to be cyclic, F prime GM. So if we can try to show the reverse, the converse is also true. If we can show that F prime GM is cyclic, then that will help us solve the problem. Uh, if you could follow all that sort of chain of reasoning. So we're going to try to show that F prime GM X is, is a cyclic quadrilateral. Um, so how do we go about this? Well, so one way to do it is to try to show that angle F prime GX is e equal to angle F prime MX. That would get us there. So I'm going to try to compute both angles and show you that the two are equal. So before I even start with that, um, first note that if F prime is the reflection of F over the line OM, uh, by symmetry, we have to have that the arc AF prime is equal to the arc BF. Some people write it as the measure of the arc AF prime is the measure of the arc BF. I'm sort of leaving out the little m for convenience. And I'm using the little hat notation um, to represent an arc. So why is AF prime equal to BF? Um, it's because um, AB has to be parallel to F prime F and parallel, seg parallel chords in a circle have to cut off equal segment, equal arcs. So arc AF has to equal arc BF. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to the angle chase that I said I was gonna do before. So I wanna, I'm gonna try to show that F prime GX is equal to F prime MX. All right, so first we have F prime GX is equal to F prime GE, and that's half of the arc F prime AE, because any, any um, inscribed angle in a circle is half um, of the intercepted arc. Okay, so now we've calculated angle F prime GX, now we want to calculate angle F prime MX and show it's the same. So first I'll start this off. So F prime MX obviously has to equal F prime MA. But then by the symmetry of the figure, that has to be the same as angle F MB. Okay. So now the thing is angle F MB, um, any... Um, angle between two chords of a circle is half the sum of the intercepted arcs. So angle FMB, it's the angle between the two chords EF and AB. So it has to be this half the sum of arc AE and arc BF. Um, if, you've been, if you've done a lot of um, competition geometry, I'm sure you've seen this. Um, if you haven't, it's not too difficult to prove, so I would recommend trying it yourself. Um, I promise you it probably won't take a while. Um, okay, so we have angle FMB is half of arc BF plus arc AE, but we mentioned before that arc BF is the same as arc uh, F prime A. So it's so, so angle FMB is actually half of arc AE plus half of arc F prime A. So it's actually, it's actually, it should say half here, but it's actually half of arc F prime AE, which from this equation is just F prime GX as we said before. So both F prime GX and F prime MX are half of arc F prime AE. And so since they're the same angle, then we have to have that F prime G M X is a cyclic quadrilateral. And now we're right on our way to showing what we wanted to show. Okay, so now we kind of just have to finish it off. 
Um, so we wanted to show um, ultimately that xm is equal to ym. We said that if they were equal, this would be a cyclic quadrilateral. We've proven it's a cyclic quadrilateral, but now we have to show that that means that they are equal. So we basically, we have to show the converse would be true. Um, well, I'm going to try to show that the triangles F prime XM and F Y M are congruent, and that would get us there. Um, so we, we just showed that one of the angles is, um, so like I mentioned at, at the beginning of the problem, um, we know that XGM is equal to X is equal to M F Y, but but XGM is X F prime M. So we know that that one of the two or one of the three angles in the two triangles is the same. Um, how else, what else do we need to show that they're the same triangle? Well, so, so I just mentioned, so this is what I just mentioned. Angle X F prime M is equal to angle X G M, which is equal to angle E G H, which is equal to angle E F H since they intercept the same arc. And that's angle M F Y. So, um, one of the three sets of angles is, is congruent. Okay. And then um, we also have F prime M is FM. That's true uh, by symmetry. Um, since M is the midpoint of chord AB and F prime F is parallel to AB by symmetry, we have to have F prime M is FM. And um, by symmetry, we also have to have f prime mx is equal to f m y because, again, m is the midpoint of a b and a b is parallel to f prime f, so that just has to be the case. Um, and now we have enough to show that those two triangles that I mentioned are congruent. So f prime because we know that that one of the sides has to be the same. F prime M is equal to FM. Uh, and we know that um, these two angles are the same. X F prime M and M F Y. And we know that X M F is equal to Y, or X M F prime is equal to Y M F prime. So by angle side angle, they have to be the same triangle. They have to be congruent. And from there, it follows that XM equals YM. These two segments must be equal. So if you enjoy this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to my channel. Um, and I hope to post a few other theorems like this too. So mostly I'm gonna post problems, but every now and then I will post a theorem like this. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it and have a great day. Thanks.